Here in Australia, a free and democratic political system is something most of us take for granted. But for many around the world, civil and political rights are more things of fiction than fact. Notionally, our right to life, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, electoral rights and right to a fair trial are enshrined in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which was passed by the UN in 1966. In 2011, every UN member state had signed and ratified this treaty, except for China, Pakistan and Cuba, which had signed but not ratified it into their local laws, and Oman, Bhutan, Myanmar, Malaysia and Saudi Arabia, who have not signed it at all. Nations that have signed the treaty include Libya, Syria and Egypt. However, recent protests across the Middle East and the violent government responses to them have shown that even though the treaty has been signed, it's not being fully upheld. In fact, there have been questionable situations in terms of the treaty, even in many of the countries that have both signed and ratified it. Article 7. No one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. Article 9.1. Everyone has the right to liberty and security of person. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest or detention. No one shall be deprived of his liberty except on such grounds and in accordance with such procedure as are established by law. Article 18. Everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion, and the freedom, either individually or in community with others and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in worship, observance, practice and teaching. Article 25. Every citizen shall have the right and the opportunity to vote and to be elected at genuine periodic elections which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by secret ballot, guaranteeing the free expression of the will of the electors. And perhaps the most interesting from an Australian perspective is Article 17. No one shall be subjected to arbitrary or unlawful interference with his privacy, nor to unlawful attacks on his honour and reputation. In 1994, gay rights activist Nicholas Toonen brought a case before the United Nations Human Rights Commission claiming that Tasmania's laws, and thus the nation of Australia, were in breach of this treaty because they criminalised consensual homosexual sex. As well as this, he argued that the Tasmanian laws were in violation of Article 26, that all persons are equal before the law and are entitled, without any discrimination, to equal protection of the law. At the time, Toonan claimed that homosexuals in Tasmania were victims of a campaign of official and unofficial hatred, and that officials were often making discriminatory and derogatory comments on the public record. This was in the mid-1990s in Australia, which is hardly the first time and place that you'd think of when you're talking about a human rights abuse. And yet it was decided that this was indeed the case. The laws were found to be in violation of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights by the UN Human Rights Committee. Because of this, the federal government passed an act in 1994 which prohibited making laws that interfere with the private sexual conduct of consenting adults, as the laws in Tasmania did. Unfortunately, however, the Tasmanian parliament did not repeal the legislation until after questions of its legality were taken to the High Court of Australia by another gay rights activist, Rodney Croom. Once the case was given standing by the High Court, the Tasmanian government did not wait for a formal challenge and repealed the anti-gay provisions in their criminal code on May 1st, 1997, almost three years after the case was first brought to the UN. So even though we often think of the UN as being there to help developing countries, there are examples of international conventions, such as the one on civil and political rights, which are being used to affect improvements on human rights even in developed countries like Australia. The irony is, of course, that the only reason that the UN's involvement was successful was because of Australia's strong democracy and the generally high standard of political rights enjoyed by Australian citizens. This provided a system in which individuals were able to participate in and ask questions of their government. Interested in learning more about civil and political rights? Well, step one could be as easy as reading the newspaper every day. Understanding the issues that politicians and the media are talking about can allow you to develop informed opinions and decide what issues you really care about. Passionate about marriage equality? Questions about lowering the voting age? Concerned about allegations of torture in prisons like Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo Bay? The more you know about these issues, the easier it is to do something about it. Volunteering is a great way to make a difference. Amnesty International, as well as many other great organisations, are always looking for volunteers to help to promote their campaigns against human rights abuses. 
And if domestic civic action is more your thing, then why not get in touch with GetUp? It's a progressive grassroots campaign body that tries to encourage people to get more involved in the political process. And it too often runs campaigns that focus on human rights.